So update 4.2 is now live on World of Tanks console and this brings us tier 10 light tanks. This means we get five tier 10 light tanks. That is the Sheridan for the US, the T100 LT for Russia, the Remental Panzer Wagon for Germany, the AMX 13105 for France and the WZ132-1 for China. We also see some new tanks come in at tier 7 and 8 and 9 to try and fill some of the gaps and some other tanks already in the game get their tiers changed, have some balancing changes and some matchmaking changes. There's far too much information to be worth going through in detail in a video, so I'm going to go over some of the things that are interesting and key points. I'm going to leave the notes to the link to the patch notes down below and you guys can go and read those and find the things that are relevant to you if you want to do that. So one of the big changes is that light tank matchmaking is now not really a thing anymore. All light tanks pretty much now just have the standard plus two, minus two matchmaking that everything else has. This means that tanks like the Lycan, for instance, now only play up to tier nine rather than tier 10. Uh, the Amex Chaffee is the odd one out. That now plays up to tier nine, not up to tier 10, but everything else just plays up plus two. There's been a whole bunch of package changes on existing tech tree light tanks, so check out what's in your garage. You're probably going to need to rebuy packages on almost any light tank that's tier 5 plus. You'll probably need to then redo your supplies for those tanks, and you might find that you have one of the new tanks already unlocked. I opened my garage and already had a couple of new things I could get, so make sure you check and see if you can do the same. Any of the tanks you have that get affected by package changes, you're going to get a refund on the silver cost of any of those packages that you lose. And if you own one of the tanks that has changed tier, like the M41 Bulldog, the T49, which is now a tier 9 tank, uh, the LTTB, the AMX 1390, etc. If you own one of those and it's moved up a tier, it will keep all its customization, all its consumables, all its XP and stats that you earned previously. And if you had that tank researched, it should stay researched and available for purchase at the new tier. So as I said, there's a whole lot of information to take in. I'm going to take a little bit of time to try and digest it and figure out what's what. It's going to be really interesting to see uh, how this affects the meta throughout the game. I'm a little bit worried about how things are going to pan out, considering I feel like the matchmaking recently, map rotation has been much more in favor of city maps and enclosed maps than it used to be due to how many we just have of them these days. Uh, so I don't think it's the best time to be playing light tanks in World of Tanks anyway, but it's interesting to see some changes and uh, I'll look on keenly to see how players pick it up and what they choose to do with it. So that's a very quick overview of the light tank changes. We have a few other things coming with the update. There's a new map. We have Berlin Winter, which I believe is the Berlin map from War Stories that you might have seen with a few little changes. We also have a extra variant of Cliff. They've added a Cliff Winter variant. So one new map and one new Winter variant. Another pretty cool change is there's now a VIP premium tech tree, they call it. If you look down the list of countries on your tanks tab, there is now a tech tree there which just lists all of the rare premium tanks available in the game. So you can look on there, you can see which ones you own already, which ones you don't, and if they're on sale, it will tell you if they're on sale. I think this is pretty cool. I enjoyed looking through it. Um, gave me a little bit of a shock to the system seeing quite how many of them I did actually own, but it was nice having a, uh, a clear list so you can see everything that is available. You can also add custom flags to your tanks now. This is a thing where you can make a little design on a flag that will stick on the turret of your tank and uh, wave around in the wind. So that's something that some of you are into customization might enjoy. Gameplay wise, they've made a change that's fairly significant to the detected or now targeted thing. So rather than detected alert, you now have targeted pop up and this alert is no longer directional. It used to be that you had to be looking vaguely in the direction of the person looking at you to trigger that. Now it doesn't matter about what direction you're facing. You'll just hear targeted when someone is looking at you and you've been spotted. It also notes that artillery strategic mode, artillery bird's eye view, does not trigger this alert. As well as all that, we also have a new game mode that is only available in team training and tournaments. This is one that I know the competitive guys have wanted for a long time. It's something they have on PC, I believe, and this is the multi-cap assault, multi-base assault. So this is available on Ghost Town, on Cliff Winter, the new map, on Mines, Mines Rain, and Liberty Falls, apparently. So it's going to be interesting to see how the competitive scene utilize those. Another really cool change for me is that the replay system now saves up to 10 games rather than 5. And as well as that, it will save them even if you leave the session and come back. 
so you can play five games, turn your Xbox off, come back on, and you should still be able to access one of those games. Play a few more, you can go back 10 games across sessions. It has to be the same server. I'm not sure if you switch servers, you lose that log, or if you can change server back and then still go and find those games, or if it's 10 per server and you can switch between or whatever. But uh, it's a really nice change and good to see just improving that replay system just a little bit. The replays expire after 14 days, it says, or when there's major server updates are being done. So keep an eye on that because they do do server updates quite a lot. So don't get too complacent. They've also made it so you can now see uh, ribbons gained during a match when you're watching a replay through the replay system, which is a nice, nice addition. And they've also added the FV4202P premium tank to the UK tech tree to buy. So I think that's a pretty decent short summary of today's update. There's a lot of stuff in there. Most of it is these rebalancing changes for light tanks. So if that's something that you're interested in, I suggest you sit down and have a bit of a browse through the patch notes and see which tanks are affected that you like to use or that you want to know about. I'm going to spend some time today streaming some light tanks and see how they feel. So if you want to come and watch some light tank gameplay, then come over to twitch.tv slash thebeardguys and I'll be streaming. I'm kind of interested in seeing how the tanks already in my garage perform. I've got the AMX 1390 there. I've got the Lycan. I've got the AMX Chaffee. I've got the Bulldog. I've got the T49. So it's going to be interesting to see how those now fare. I don't own any of the tier 10 light tanks yet. I'm not sure if I'm going to go grinding them like crazy. They're not super interesting to me. As much as I love light tanks, I'm not a huge fan of tier 10. I prefer the variation in tanks you get in slightly lower tiers at 7 and 8. But I'll be interested to talk to you guys and hear what you think about the tier 10 lights and think if there's any of them that you guys think that I might enjoy then let me know in the comments here or come over to Twitch chat and chat to me on uh, on stream and we can find out there. So hopefully you guys found that video useful. Don't forget to hop over to Twitch if you want to watch some update 4.2 live. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. My name is Ben, we are the Beard Guys and I'll see you next time.